Hi everybody, don't touch this dial because this is the Hank Cisco Show. I'm sitting in for Hank and I have a great show for you today. We have Sally Pryor, who is the COO, and we have Roger Heiser, who is the president and CEO of LifeQuest. And we're going to learn about everything you need to know about senior care, how to get into it, what to do, and how important it is today, because Roger is the man with statistics. So, Roger, uh, first off, before we do anything, uh, you're a Philadelphia guy. Yes, grew up in Philadelphia. Grew up in Philadelphia. Germantown. Germantown, went to Germantown High? I did. Oh, that's great. And, and your parents were, what did your father do? My uh, mom and dad were in the flower business. They flower. had a flower shop on Shelton Avenue in, right, right. near Limekiln Pike. Right. So, um, and you went from flower shop to, <laughs> to being an accountant and then being involved in yeah. healthcare. It's a, one of the nicest things about, um, I think coming out of the public school education system was it was really difficult to get into college and it was actually a good fight because you learned an awful lot about trying to self-promote. And in that promotion process, I went to uh, Penn State for a year and then I went to Temple for a year and then I was in the military for a little bit and then I finished up at Penn State Business School. I thought I wanted to be a journalism major and I wound up uh, finding that I was maybe I should take an accounting course because I might not be a great journalist and I found accounting came very simple to me so I had a great cue in, uh, in accounting. Graduated, went to work for a big firm called Touche Ross which is now Deloitte, a public accounting firm. That is a big firm. Yeah, that's an international firm. Yeah. And um, I stayed in Philadelphia and my clients were hospitals and banks. So starting in public accounting you, you start as a junior and you work your way up. And uh, there used to be a lot of regional banks. Now there's national banks. And Philadelphia had quite a few regionals. <clears throat> so I learned banking. Uh, and then I learned um, hospital systems, because Jefferson and Graduate Hospital and Hahnemann Hospital, they were all clients. Mm -hmm. So from that, um, I decided I didn't want to be in public accounting. And um, what would I do? <clears throat> and I think it's very good for anybody, if you're graduating uh, from high school or college, think about what is it that you want to do because you don't know really and the answer was what's going to be around for a long time so it was the water industry the energy industry chemistry uh, chemi chemicals if you would um, health care trash and I went down mm -hmm. a list of them I just listed them all out and what did I know I learned about banking and health care so I went into the health care business as a CEO of a hospital <clears throat> in Quakertown Pennsylvania as only, they hired you as the CEO and oversee their budgetary stuff and everything as it, else. As it matured, I became the CEO of uh, Quakertown Hospital. And then developed it into a community health system that provided acute care services, psychiatric services, uh, long-term care services, <clears throat> physical therapy, in-home care. Mm -hmm. And um, as it evolved, let's see, it started in 78. Um, I can't believe I'm still with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a very rewarding experience. So, as a florist, son of a florist, you had a budding uh, career. career. <laughs> had a budding yeah, career. About that, yeah. <laughs> you know Same. what kind of uh, children florists have? No, no. What kind of children do florists have? <laughs> Blooming idiots. Blooming idiots. <laughs> well, you've you've proved them wrong on that part. <laughs> and and um, Sally, a little bit about you and how you got involved in this thing. And I know you have a little personal thing on the side with your parents that kind of brings it home, but. How did you get involved in this? Sure. I, uh, in high school, I was a geriatric feeder. Um, that was a feeding assistant during, um, after school from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. I would go uh, to the local nursing home and was paid to, uh, to feed the residents that needed assistance. So I always had a passion for older adults. Um, and then with that, I went you to school. You still do. I do. I do. Thank, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I went. It does make uh, the job easier. It yeah. does. You have to, I think, you know, you love, love what you do. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I truly do. Uh, went to school for communications and advertising. Um, after college, I decided, uh, well, life happened and I had my children first. So I came into the workforce, uh, you know, um, probably about 15 years after I graduated college and um, went in and did uh, admissions and marketing for senior care. And senior care is like your nursing home at the time. And how, old was you, how old were your children when you decided to go into that? I uh, probably, um, I think five, six, and seven. Wow. 
So uh, now they're in their mid twenties. Yeah. I'm a grandma. We've, been, we've interviewed. <laughs> so we've it's interviewed, been a while. <laughs> we've interviewed uh, a number of. I've interviewed a few uh, women who've started their own businesses and everything else. Sure. Same scenarios that happen, and and uh, and they just took charge of where they wanted to be. So mm -hmm. it seems so. You got into that, and then yeah. how did you meet this guy? I was. Uh, I became a nursing home administrator actually. So my career had escalated from admissions. I did that for a while. Uh, marketing became an administrator and um, had, you know, as, as big as the, the um, industry is, it's kind of small as well. Uh, and then uh, Roger had asked, uh, met him about a decade ago um, when we were looking. Um, he I came was 12. To, yeah. 12. <laughs> he came to tour a, a dementia unit that I had worked at. And then um, a decade later, we actually, I believe, knew um, um, a physician together and his wife had worked with me. And then she said, hey, you should go talk to Roger. Um, you know, back up in Quaker Town, there's a very large campus and a daycare division, and you know we're building assisted living, and it was really exciting. And I said, this is a good time. It's always a good time in your career uh, that when uh, you're in a good place, but you're a little more solid and to make the next move. And I did. Well, you know, Hank. Four years Hank, ago. <laughs> Hank always has a, has a bunch of sayings that I'm trying to commit all these to mind because they're really great. And one of the things he says, a turtle doesn't go anywhere until they stick their neck out. Yeah. And so that's what you did. That's great. And it's a good thing. On that's it. the truth. It's so, never been boring. <laughs> uh, I, I would adventure to say no. So let, let's talk about Life Quest, what it is, what it does, and uh, the organization itself. Um, you know, Life Quest started in, in uh, 1932. It was actually Quakertown Community Hospital. And I got there in 78. <clears throat> And it evolved into the name LifeQuest um, because the healthcare industry was changing and it was going to be more um, segmented and capital was going to be extremely important. Um, and you saw this as working in that field as an accountant, you saw the changes that were happening for sure. along mm -hmm. the way. So you were like instantly drawn. To well, the, the, uh, the United States government and the state government have huge fiscal problems with delivering health care services. And every day, uh, 10,000 people a day right now are turning 65, meaning they're eligible for Medicare and Social Security. That's 10,000 people a day, uh, day. turning 65. And in 10 years, it'll be 18% of our population. And in 10 years, it'll be about 81 million people over the age of 65. This government does not know how to fund that. So working in this field has always been a challenge. Can I answer this question? Of that number, and you may not have the statistics mm -hmm. on this, but of that number, what percentage will need some kind of care facility? I know a lot of 65-year-old people can hang out there too. You know, I know your parents, sure. even though your mom, and we'll touch on that, uh, he's 80 years old and they still live in their own house and stuff like that. So what percentage would need your type of facility to get to at, at that point? Well. Or, I want to just back up a second and say LifeQuest was an integrated community health system. And in 1995... When you say integrated, what did you mean? Integrated. I mean, it provided all types of services to the public in the region they serviced. <clears throat> in 1995, the board, through a, a process of education, I indicated that we're very successful. It was the best small hospital in the United States. And they said the... Uh, it's, you're not going to be successful because you won't be able to access capital. And to that end, the best thing to do would be merge your small community hospital with a tertiary hospital. We merged with St. Luke's University Health Network up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Very good move. So we sold and merged all the acute care services to the St. Luke's organization. And LifeQuest focused on child care and on long-term care. When you say acute care, you're talking about the emergencies and stuff like that, the normal hospital, hospital, stuff. hospital services, stuff, yeah. you know, paramedic services. Yeah, the things you see on TV with right. the different yeah. TV shows, okay. So, they aren't realistic, but yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured that, but that's okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, today, LifeQuest committed to focusing on geriatric senior care uh, for the public <clears throat> and also child care from six weeks age through kindergarten. We do all the before and after school programming for the community schools up there. So uh, it took quite a while, but for the last 15, 16 years, we developed a uh, campus concept of size, uh, about 200 acres, and St. Luke's. 
So your your campus is now 200 acres. Uh, it's 10663 between yeah, 309 and Turnpike. Yeah, not too uh, perfect location. For mm -hmm. Very good. Like that, uh, easily accessible. And it's working great. I mean, St. Luke's is building a new med surge hospital on that campus. <clears throat> so you'll have the acute care right next to the other care. So right. it's almost like they're coming back together again, but not physically back together. And they'll still be their own entities. Sure. Well, if you're worried about your mother and father, <clears throat> and they're in an assisted living building or an independent living facility or a skilled facility, it's really comforting to know that you'll have a medical surgical hospital literally five minutes away. So you can, you can age gracefully on this campus. So there'll be independent housing. <clears throat> There's going to be uh, assisted living. There'll be, um, and I'll have Sally discuss what the type of housing is and what, what goes on in that building. And we'll have child care for, you know, six weeks of age, plus we'll have garden apartments for 20 to 40 year olds. So there's, it's, it's a, an integrated campus so that you don't warehouse the elderly. So the, the question is, why should this topic be important to the people watching this show? I mean... Um, <clears throat> I think it's a very important <coughs> topic because it's a large part of your society and it's getting larger, faster. So it's a financial issue, um, and if you're a student and you're looking forward to finding a career, there's many career opportunities in, uh, in the healthcare industry, as there were when I started out in 1973. Um, and I think long-term care uh, has so many different components to it, as well as senior housing and independent housing. So Sally, why don't you talk about what that is? Sure. Uh, um, we have, <coughs> pardon me. Like Roger had said, you know, and, and we have the daycare division, which is, is on our campus as well. Um, you know, there's, there's opportunity there just from a workforce standpoint for teachers, for people out of high school that want to come in and, you know, and be um, child care aides, which is really nice. Uh, uh, how young are some of the people that would work in there? I, I would imagine you could start some Right out of high school. So eight, right out of high sure, school. 18, um, for sure. Uh, we actually are starting in our nursing center, and I can uh, get into that in a second, but we're doing a work-study program with a local community college. So some of those students that are going for, like, certified nursing assistants, they're able now to leave school for half of the day, come over and get credit and shadow us and um, you know, until they graduate, which is a great opportunity. Um, so on the main, the main campus, you know, there's three, three primarily levels of um, care and senior living, but the nursing home. Um, that's your skilled nursing facility, uh, and that's for folks that need the most care, 24-hour, around-the-clock um, nursing care. Uh, They're not really capable of taking care of themselves. No, they've been, they've, um, you know, they need the services. They, they may have gone from, you know, uh, assisted living. Living at what, home. It's, a, it's, it's a living at home, they may move into <coughs> yeah. kind of assisted living or kind of... Uh, well, you uh, can go independent, independent if you wanted to Independent first. living, right. That's, that's a, your least restrictive. You then you go like assisted you and living and then you go into uh, the, the, the well, care. That, I want to say that there's a lot of reasons why people should be interested in this. One is career opportunities in health care. Sure. <clears throat> the second one I'm going to say Wait, is... Let me just say, interrupt you that just to know we'll be, be showing the contact information there so if there's anybody that you know or you're interested in it please contact uh, LifeQuest and they can fill you in on this but go ahead. There's career opportunities um, plus it's a social issue for the whole country so I'll give you an example of my mom and dad. My mom and dad are both deceased. They were married 50 years. Uh, men tend to die before women do and they have other medical complications that women don't have because of their career path and same thing for women <clears throat> and so we age at different rates I became the caretaker for my parents because I was the next generation down and I took care of my parents uh, I'm going to be the next generation up and I have to take care of myself my son lives in uh, Michigan <clears throat> whereas my parents live close by so whether you're 20 years old or whether you're 40 years old or whether you're 55 years old, you're going to have to deal with some form of that care for your parents. Whether it's living at home and you have to get them some assistance at home, whether it's an independent living facility where they get their meals and they have activities and it's social, uh, and you progress into a, a need for activities of daily living, which are showering and you know, or bathing, and cooking <clears throat> and you need support to do that that's an assisted living 
And then when you really need um, full-time care, which is skilled care, skilled nursing care, uh, that's a 24-7 type of care, and Sally again will discuss what that is exactly. Um, you're going to have to pay for it, and I don't think the state's going to be able to continue to pay for that, and we'll discuss why. There's insurance you can buy. You say, why do you buy insurance for long-term care? I'm only 45 years old. Because it's rather inexpensive at 45 years old, and when you get to be 60, it's very expensive. Mm. <clears throat> and there's different types of uh, policies you can get to help pay for that. And you're going even if you have Medicare, you have to buy a supplemental policy to help pay for your care in a long-term care facility. So there's a lot to know uh, about that aging process. Well, one of the things uh, that's, uh, that comes, because that's very personal, about 20 years ago, 20-some years ago, my wife and I and uh, my mother-in-law, who is now 92 years old, we all bought long-term care, health, you know, care. And uh, it took us, we took a 10-year payout plan, so after 10 years it was all paid full. Full now I had to pay another dime at all. Uh, my mother-in-law was going along great. Um, and then all of a sudden she couldn't drive or anything else like that. So she entered into that field. But because uh, she, we had this policy, she's able to stay at home. Mm -hmm. She has care pretty much all the time. And a good bit of that's paid for. And we can afford to keep her for many, many, many more years very comfortable in, in surroundings she knows and loves. Right. And, and, I, think that, and I think it's really important. Sure. Well, I, I believe that the... You know, a quality of life issue comes into play here. Like, what kind, what kind of life do you want for your parents? And what type of life do they want? And what type of life do you but want? For yourself. <laughs> for yourself, exactly. too, because this is all it very personal. It becomes fully consuming yeah. uh, for you as a caretaker for your parents. My mom and dad uh, had an, their own home, and then they, um, they moved into a continuing care retirement community, which is a full-service community that promises uh, a lifestyle as well as nutrition and exercise and social interaction with people and if you need it they have long-term care available <clears throat> but it came up, became apparent that my father needed skilled care and my mother was still pretty independent um, it's, it's short story it's pretty funny but um, they were living in the independent uh, CCRC community and my mother liked to play bridge so she'd go down to play bridge with girls and I bought my father a scooter so he could ride around on the scooter. It was a pretty big building. Well, um, she took the scooter away because when she went <laughs> down to play bridge, he would go out down the hallway, down the elevator, out the front door, and go out to a busy highway and travel a quarter of a mile on the highway to get a <laughs> cup of rate. coffee and donuts because he really liked donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the donut shop finally figured out, this old guy shouldn't be on a scooter <laughs> coming down the highway. <laughs> and she, they called and they you know, the, the police came and took him back. <clears throat> and my mom um, was rather annoyed at him, so she took the key away whenever she went away. <laughs> so he couldn't do so that. He couldn't do no it. more escape. No more escape, so <laughs> but, he really was an assisted <clears throat> living at that point. So <laughs> my mother went into um, an independent living, assisted living facility, like the one we're constructing, of size. We're going to have um, about 126 uh, suites and uh, over half of them are going to be assisted living and the other half are going to be independent. Uh, it's going to be a magnificent project. Well, it's a 200 and some acre Yeah, it's going to be a magnificent so it's project. It's going to be great. And right, you know, right off the turnpike, you Very you accessible. Well, very part, accessible. Of the, part of the reason we, I did this and talked to the board about it with them was that my father needed skilled care. My mother was independent. Yeah, it's And there was, it was 25 minutes between the two buildings that they were in because mom lived up near Bethlehem in her independent facility and my dad was in our skilled facility and uh, she wanted to be with them because they were married 50 years and so I had to arrange for the transportation. It was either me or somebody else would have to pick my mom up and bring them and she'd stay with them all day long until he died and then she needed assisted living and then eventually she needed skilled care to take care of her. So, the reason they sell life insurance and the reason why they sell long-term care insurance is you'll use it. Mm -hmm. You might buy homeowner's insurance all your life because the bank wants it. Mm -hmm. You probably won't use it. Mm -hmm. Right. This you will. This you'll guarantee yeah, use it. Sure. Sally, what are the levels that, um, that are there in, in the facility? You know, uh, let's say I'm coming in and I want it to be in the uh, independent living. 
So do I make a contract that says, okay, you're in the living, independent living, which is probably a townhouse or something like that, a couple be bedrooms and a bath, or you can get one bedroom. Sure. Maybe the grandkids come and visit or something like that, or the great-grandkids, or the great-great-great-grandkids. <laughs> sure. So you, you go from there. So take me through the process. What kind of contract do I make? Is it from cradle to grave at that point? Tell me about that. Um, you know, you, you can, uh, we're a very, we're a need-driven industry. So you typically, like you said, you come to us when you need that. Um, for independent, you just want to probably be part of a community that you, you know, if perhaps your clinical needs and you need help, then you, you know, you can just shift down to the next level. So you can come into independent. I mean, everyone on our campus, whether you're in like the nursing facility or the assisted living or the independent, you always have the freedom to come and go as you wish. It's just that you need assistance, perhaps in other areas. And this so would be medications. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So one of the problems is um, your memory isn't as strong as you become a senior. Mm -hmm. And uh, physicians, one of the greatest challenges when they're geriatric physicians or, or caretakers uh, for older people uh, is getting them to be compliant with their medications. And frankly, they don't do that. So one of the things that we would assist you with is making sure you get your medications when you're supposed to get them every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's an important point. And, and, and to do that, the two main things that usually land you in the hospital when you're a senior um, are the meds and not eating. It's just mm -hmm. as simple as just be someone preparing yeah. you meals and giving yeah. you the meals. So. I really should look into that because I even forget to take my vitamins during the day. <laughs> yeah. um, but but when important. I come in, if I make a contract with LifeQuest sure. and I say, listen, guys, here's my insurance policy I've had all these years. You sure. know, I got Social Security, I got all this protection. I want to be here. This is where I want to be. So I sign a contract just for the the, the independent living, or mm -hmm. can, or is there staged contracts that says, okay, we're you'll be here until these conditions, yeah. then we're going to move you to this condition. So tell me about those exactly different right. levels. Exactly um, right. The main goal is you really want people to be in the proper setting. Um, so if you come in, we'll assess you for um, you know for your need. If you need skilled nursing care, you can mm -hmm. you know you'll go there. Um, typically, if you come right into the nursing facility, you've been struggling with, with some clinical problems obviously. and that of doctor, or physician, your family members um, can't take care of you anymore at home. You come into the skilled facility. But the other part of the skilled facilities, we get a lot of folks there for short-term rehab, and that is typically a, a short-term stay. Your insurance will pay the for that. An example might be a broken for hip. hip. Hip or, surgery, or knee car, surgery, car knee hip, um, like that. Yeah. Uh, people that have strokes, <clears throat> you know, need some speech therapy, some physical therapy, occupational therapy. So um, our goal when you come in there is a comprehensive care plan that um, disciplines. That's what I'm own. talking about. So I would be under a comprehensive care plan, yeah. but yet at the same time, you offer facilities to people that would need short-term help to overcome certain pro hip yes. replacement, knee replacement, yep. something like that. Well, and, here's and, here's the idea um, by. Developing the campus that we we did, uh, we are doing. You, the family doesn't have this burden of uh, commuting between two parents and having them come together because it's all on the same campus, and you'll be able to navigate between the independent living facility and the skilled facility. Um, why is that important? Well, my dad needed skilled care. My mother was independent. She could walk through the building and get into the, into the skilled building and go back. She can dine with them. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be together. Mm -hmm. And I think the dementia aspect of, uh, and Alzheimer's aspect of aging is extremely important. And one party can have dementia and the other one can be very clear. But they don't want to separate and you don't want to separate them and you can't be the only provider for them. Uh, you won't have a life. Sure. And you're, you may still have children. And they're in high school, or they're you know might you today, a grandparent can be the yeah. the parent of the grandchildren because the family split up, mm. and uh, one a couple more than one of my good friends, at age seventy he became the care care father for two little children that were three and five. Oh my God! And that's a strength. That and his good. wife had dementia. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, so that's, the that's real life fun. situations, you know. Yeah, sure. I'm and sure it, that. It is peace of mind. It's peace of mind once you enter the community that you don't have to leave. So if you come into the independent, which is like you come and you go, we provide the meals and housekeeping and just give you like the ease of living maintenance free, if you will, which you know, really is attractive. To you folks. and I, you and I, Sally, have something in common because uh, um, my mother-in-law, her husband, my father-in-law, had Alzheimer's. Sure. 
and she was the caretaker up until a certain point. And, I, and, and you talked about how your, your uh, mom has Alzheimer's and your father even is a little bit older. And they're still living in an in a independent living. So you can definitely relate to this, this uh, scenario that, uh, that ultimately you know they're going to have to go into one of these facilities. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you know, ideally, folks, there's a lot of choices right now. Um, and I think it's, it's important when you had asked Roger, like, why do we, you know, why do people care? Why are we talking about this? Um, you know, you, you know, at a young age, you know, like you don't think of getting old, but that's the reality of it. And the more you can plan. Actually, at a young like, age, you can't wait to be 21. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you can plan, you have choices, it's true. like anything. When you plan properly, you have choices, and I think that's the good thing. You know, it's very, in the same respect, we have people that are, you know, will just show up with just horrific, like, story, and they're working, and, you know, in, the, you know, in my case, I'm the youngest. I have, there's seven siblings, uh, you know, and my folks do live in their own homes. They have a vacation home, and they can go back and forth, but the roles have switched. My mom was truly uh, the caretaker for all of us. You know, she never worked. She was a homemaker. And, and my dad, and they both, you know, were golfing, you know, two years ago. But it switched. So now my dad, we're lucky that he is healthy enough to assist her at home. Um, but we do also, LifeQuest also has um, a, um, um, a home care um, agency where we can go into their home and help some folks, So you actually very offer, vital. <clears throat> so that's something else, you actually offer a, 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 the opportunity for somebody who's living not on your campus but outside your campus, yes. you can create the living to make sure they're taking the to medicine, help them, help them maybe make dinner for them, things well, like we that. Well, we want to embrace uh, senior care. Mm -hmm. and senior care is given in a lot of different ways. It's not just institutional care. Um, it's not going to be uh, just in an independent living or there's congregate care. In congregate care, think of it as uh, apartment building living, and yet you share some common services with everybody in the building. Mm -hmm. That might be uh, the meal process. You might get 20 meals a month. The rest you're independent for. You may want housekeeping services, and they're shared services, so we provide those services. <clears throat> so um, I would say... Each case is different, and long-term care insurance is extremely important to look at and buy. So now, here's the big $64 question, you know. What would a reasonable person need to plan? Because uh, Hank had a saying, you know, you, know, you don't go sailing in stormy weather. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is to resolve these issues, have a vision of what you want, while it's still relatively calm, you got your mind still going and your health sure. and everything else like that, what would uh, you recommend to somebody who needs to get covered for, for this type of insurance and where would they go? Well, and how they <clears throat> the one thing you recognize is that insurance companies don't want to insure you when you need it. So, you know, my house burned down, I'll go get some it's insurance. Late, you know? It's a little late to get insurance <laughs> yeah. at that yeah. point. My husband has dementia. Maybe I should get some insurance on him. Yeah, um, yeah right. That's that, too late. A little too late, right. So planning the process of life is important, whether you're coming out of high school and what you're going to plan on doing for the next six, seven years. And in some cases, you're going into the military or you're going into college, but you're planning that process. You get out in college, you got to plan for your career. Um, we get hung up on planning lots of things, but what we don't plan for is the inevitable and that you're going to require health care mm -hmm. and you're going, to have, you're going to require assistance. And, you know, families aren't as large as they were. Sally, you had seven. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bunch. <laughs> and, I had a brother and a, I have a brother and a sister, but she lives in California, and uh, she has a family out there. My brother lives fairly close by, but he's older than me. Mm -hmm. And um, my son lives in Michigan, and it's not too different than other people that I'm talking to, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, what am I going to do for myself? Because my father always said, take care of yourself and take care of your family. So how do I take care of myself? I'm going to plan for what my life's mm -hmm. going to be. So you would say somebody should definitely have insurance, life insurance, and then uh, I know, like for me, I know the plan that I bought that my wife and I and my mother-in-law we bought is no longer available. It was a very, very good plan. Uh, I just think economic. Well, the insurance companies that started out providing uh, <clears throat> home care and long-term care policies, they horribly underestimated the cost of that care, and that's why they stopped writing them. 
Now, that would be a traditional uh, policy, <clears throat> and the premiums can go up and up and up unless you're doing a single pay policy. I, I would suggest you have someone that actually sells these policies talk to your audience. And Actually, I think that's going to be our next, one of our next uh, interviews is going to be somebody in this industry to follow up with that, and I'm sure that'll be We're, like we're a, on the care provider side, yeah, not on the insurance side, <clears throat> but I just bought a hybrid policy which is kind of a, a classic, um, classic insurance policy for care that I would need in my home or anywhere else, but it also has some other very good aspects, like it has a death benefit and it has um, a guaranteed monthly benefit and it, 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 it rises with the cost of living. Somebody should speak to that because that's really key to the planning process. So now, if, if the we... delivery process is what we're doing and what we're creating is an environment where we believe we'll be able to support um, pretty much a community. I mean, mm -hmm. there'll be people there, 20 to 40 year olds in, in apartments, and then there's gonna be people there 50 to 80 years old in apartments, and then there's the different levels of care, and there's some commercial space, you know, convenient commercial space, and 100 acres of open space, and a new hospital. Mm -hmm. so, so it's all gonna be there, so that might be the the wave of the future to have these total campus uh, outlooks, many, many cities in them themselves. Sure. So in wrapping up, uh, this is LifeQuest, Roger Heiser, President and CEO, Sally Pryor, <clears throat> the COO uh, of LifeQuest. And uh, to sum it all up, make sure you plan, make sure you recognize the fact that we all have a common place that we wind up at. <laughs> and, well, Stan, uh, you know, if if your audience has a question, we have people in our organization that actually help people through that process because applying for Medicaid, uh, state, state care, if you would, mm -hmm. payment, and uh, getting your senior benefits out of Medicare, who, who do you have people who, to do Who that? do you call and do you have a phone number we can, we'll... You, you can go on our website if you just went to uh, lifequest.org um, and, and we can get our contact information there. Um, or you could call. Um, That's LifeQuest, all one word, yes, L I F E Q U E S T dot org. Right. Right. Correct. Okay. And um, uh, hopefully it'll be flashing up on the bottom of your screen also. And, yeah, they, no. and you'll field questions for people sure, and everything sure. else. Because and, it is, it's, it. it's we, al we also can give reference to government websites where there's other information for you because part of the planning process really includes you need a living will and you need a directive. And you Very have important. to go through those conversations with your spouse or by yourself and a lawyer mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you don't wind up unprepared. Unprepared. So look forward to the uh, next session. Uh, we'll have someone here to follow up on, on the, pro the issues that we talked about here. But I want to thank uh, Roger and Sally so much for coming in here and um, talking about uh, our futures and how important they are. So uh, thank you again for watching. See you on the, the other side, Stan. <laughs> See you on the other side. Thank you for watching the Hank Cisco Show. I'm Stan Casasio. See you next time. Take care.